so literally I've I've you know I set up a profile um, not so long ago, probably a, a week or two ago, and already on that profile is 173 friends requests, and that's of a child that you know that's a, that's the, a profile of a 12 year old girl, and I can guarantee that that some of them will be linked to rings, paedophile rings. I experienced some some things as a as a child that I, I really shouldn't have gone through, um, that I never got justice for, I never got answers for. So it, it kind of took me to a dark place. I, I saw one day a live video of a of a paedophile being stung, and it just it intrigued me, and it just it started from there. I've stung a lot of different sexual predators from all different walks of life and now I'm used to the same, it's the same pat or the same, they come out with the same excuses or oh, I was hacked or, you know, I didn't know what I was doing or I was drunk or, you know, all these different things. And that's when you realise that it's, you know, the, the, the realisation is set in that actually this thing that they've been hiding for so long is, is now out. The cat's out of the bag. Do you mind talking about how you got that blank profile? So literally I've, I've you know, I set up a profile um, not so long ago, probably a, a week or two ago. And already on that profile is 173 friends requests. And that's of a child, you know, that's a, that's the, a profile of a 12 year old girl. And pretty much all of them are from England. And I can guarantee that, that some of them will be linked to rings, paedophile rings. What's the one you feel pride of? We had a team of decoys working for us and um, the, a guy was under a profile called Danny Williams on Facebook. He was talking about bullying the kids, talking about, you know, um, anal sex with the kids. And it, it just got really, really bad to the point where I was even telling my decoys not to engage in conversation because it was just vile. He was a bully, um, a narcissistic bully. He was already released under investigation. So he was under investigation at that point, And then we turned up and, and stung him. But I put a picture of him on the page probably half an hour, 40 minutes after we'd left and left the police station. And within 10 minutes, I was contacted off a 17 year old girl who had been raped by him from the age of 12 upwards. She'd never told anybody in her life that she'd been raped or abused by him. And I was the first person that she disclosed to. Um, I instantly knew that I needed to put her in touch with the police if she was willing to do that. Um, she did that and the following day she went and gave a statement and secured five counts of rape on him. And on the 4th of June, just gone, he was jailed for eight years. That's a real person, that's a real 12 year old who's had to live through those times. And then just, you know, just because I put a picture on a Facebook page, for her to come forward and disclose one that she's been raped and abused by him, but then to go own it and follow it through. He had no, no option but to plead guilty. What a strong, inspirational young woman. Why are you wearing a mask? Um, the, it, because it's not about me. What I don't want is people stopping me in the street and saying, oh my God, you know, you're a paedophile hunter because I've, I've seen other, other hunters go down that road and I've seen, you know, the, the whole Facebook persona take over. That's not me, it's not who I am. I'm just doing it because I can and because I want to and it's the right thing to do. Paedophile hunters get a lot of a lot of shit in, in the you know, in the media. We're portrayed as, as vigilantes, but we're not in any way, shape or form bringing about our own laws. This is a law of the country that, that we're abiding by and this is you know, every single case that we've processed and put through has been charged and found guilty. There's, there's not too much vigilante about that to me. Are there people you wouldn't? 
it's it's a very grey area in in what we do because there's there there are people online that are vulnerable themselves. For instance, if we get someone who starts speaking to one of the decoys and we suspect that that person might have some kind of learning difficulties, contact at that point is stopped. Um, and then we'll reach out to adult social services and you know sometimes the police to to try and as mad as it sounds safeguard that person from themselves it takes five minutes to check a child's device literally five minutes um there's not many you know there's there's probably five or six apps that children go on um that are the most popular platforms and they're also most popular for grooming so if you've got a child that's on say snapchat or instagram or whatsapp or facebook and you don't know who your child is talking to then really you should know who your child is talking to because they could be speaking to anybody the risks online are very very real and your children are in danger if they're left unsupervised on an iphone or a tablet while i do what i do and i've you know i've done it successfully for nearly three years predators are still able more than able you know it, it does happen a predator was able to get through to my son and message him on instagram and and say you know this was this was only probably about two months ago and and say oh you know uh, i want you to send me pictures i'll pay you money we are seeing that that as a direct result of the facebook page being there and the awareness that's generated you know we're seeing real results i've pretty much now dedicated my life to it before I started that, like, I really struggled with my identity and, and who I was and what I was meant to be and where I fitted into society. If I can stop one person, just one person with this from becoming another version of me and, and having to live the same kind of life that I have, then, you know, that, that's the power of one. You'll never truly understand how many people you're reaching, but as long as it's one, then, you know, job's done. It's quite possibly the best therapy that I've ever had because it's exposure therapy. Every single time I go out on the road, apart from today, I'm stood in front of a paedophile, um, asking them why they're doing what they're doing. And I've never got the answer. I've never, I'll never be able to understand what they do, but um, every time we, we get a result, it's, it's as if little Mike gets a little bit of peace, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit more of the jigsaw slots into place.